Good morning, everyone. Um, there's a few children, but I guess we're all children at heart, so I'm hoping this will um, be of interest to the adults as well. So we should have a presentation come up with some images, and I've also got some things, interesting things, in my bag. Oh, there we go. Which are all about things that we make or build to help keep us safe. So, anyone recognise that one? Go on, then. It is. Well done. I didn't know that the children would know that one. Now, castles were built a long time ago, weren't they? When people didn't feel very safe, did they? Because sometimes there were people out to get them, armies or whatever, and they had to build big strongholds, often up on hills. Sometimes, Inverness Castle isn't like this, but sometimes with moats or drawbridges, don't they? So to keep them nice and safe, they would build a castle. Have we got the next picture in Mary? Now, I quite liked that one. So I don't know how safe that is, but it's shelter, isn't it? Um, and it's not people, it's horses or ponies that are under that shelter. But again, it's a makeshift shelter that will keep them protected from maybe the rain, maybe a wee bit of the cold, and keep them a bit safer. Maybe not as safe as a castle, but that's something that they would build to protect them from the wind and rain. Next picture. If it's coming, there we go. Now, I wasn't sure whether this was a hurricane shelter or a bomb shelter or even whether it was in current use, but it's a shelter that you might build if something was happening that you had to flee for safety. So it could be, um, for some countries, sadly, they're under attack, aren't they? So they might need to shelter in something like that that looks to me like a bomb shelter. So again, something to keep us safe. Um, and I think, I can't remember how many more I've got. Is it one or two? Well, I think there's one last one. Oh, there's two, actually. So this, you might have seen this in buildings in the event of a fire. And it's where you're meant to go, assemble or um, meet together, so that you can be counted to make sure you're safe, so that everybody that was in the building is counted for if a building is on fire or there's danger. So again, it's a safety point, isn't it? Far away from the building, where you can be checked to see that everybody's okay. And the last one, I think, and then I'll get to my bag. Yeah, I just, I quite liked that. It's just a picture, I think, of somebody being hugged by someone else. And it talks about a safe place. Now, I'm not sure where a safe place for that sign might be, but we'll perhaps think as we go through this talk about where a safe place might be for us. But I've also got some items in my bag, and I might need... Some people might need to come and help me to find out what they are or to tell me what they are. Is it okay to use the handheld? That way I can come. Oh, my goodness, I can come down. Right. Would anybody like to come and see what's in my bag? Do you want to? Yeah, come on then. Okay. Which order? Do you want to just put your hand in and pull it out or would you like me to take it in one at a time? Just take it out. Take it out. Go on then. Go on, Ailey. Hold on, now there's things in there, so let them drop first. Oops, what is Go on, could you want to hold that up? Let the adults see what you've pulled out. So where might we use that to keep safe? A construction. Well done, that's a big a word. A construction, yeah. Well, you, yeah, a forest you might as well, actually. Although I think the forest one has, like, head guards as well, don't they? <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. If something fell now from the roof, it won't because we've made sure it's all safe. You'd be okay, wouldn't you, Ailey? Excellent. So we use helmets. What about, what about this? Safety goggles. Yes, exactly. They're what would you... science to keep our eyes up. Science, they are. Yeah, in science or if you're doing some DIY. Oh, yeah. You could do that. You have an explosion and then you want to keep your eyes safe. Uh, that's exactly right. Like Did, I don't know if folks heard that. If there was an explosion, Coke. which I hope we're not going to be in the church, Mental but eyes would Coke. be safe. Mental Cokes. Now, this is one that might bring back memories, well, for everybody in the church, actually. This was my one, and we used to wear, oh, I can see everybody going, oh my goodness, no. Do you remember the masks we used to have to wear all the time when we went out? Did and what? Sick people can sneeze did you say big people, Lily? Yeah, or people. Yeah, so it was to keep other people safe in case we had germs, but it was also to keep us safe if they had germs, wasn't it? So a mask is a way of keeping ourselves safe. Anyway, 
And here's another one that's a very small thing. Do you, either of you girls know what that is? I bet your daddy or mummy might be able to help. Do you know it? Mummy's looking, it's very small. What did, did mummy say? I think she said, didn't she? It's a fuse. Yeah, well done. Karen knows now. You might not know what a fuse does, but they're very, very little, aren't they? But you have them inside electrical items so that if you make a mistake and put something that's too big for the power, the fuse cuts it out so you won't be able to use it. But it's a safety thing. Keeps us safe, doesn't it? Are we almost done? Yes. <laughs> yes, you are. Right, you can sit down. Thank you very much, girls. Okay. Now, these things are all great, aren't they? They keep us safe. And you should always use these things to keep safe. The problem is that life has a way of throwing things at us that maybe a helmet or goggles or even a castle doesn't help with. So maybe if you're sad or you're lonely, maybe if friends or relationships are difficult, maybe if things are happening in life where you're unwell or maybe someone you love is unwell, <laughs> or just things that are happening round about. I mean, do you think people living in castles were always safe and ev never had any worries? No, they didn't, did they? They had worries as well. But the good news is, although all of these things have their limits, we're going to hear about a bit in the Bible that tells us that God is our refuge. And a refuge just means a place of safety. So when everything else happens in life, and when some of these things aren't working or aren't able to help, we know that God is always able to keep us safe and protected. A bit like some of the things we saw, but much, much better than that. So we'll remember that as we go through the service. Now for the littler ones, or the bigger ones if you want, there's some activities up the back if you want to do it. There's a word search and there's some pictures and so on if you'd like to do that um, during the service. Or you can stay and listen as well. But before we do that, let's do an action song. A big, 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 big fish. A big, 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 big fish. A big, 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 big fish to rescue Prophet Jonah. God sent some flap, 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 flapping birds. Some flap, 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 flapping birds. Some flap, flap, flap. Flapping birds to feed the prophet Elijah. God made all creatures, great and small. Some jump, some gallop, some even crawl. Some squeak, some howl, and some they roar. But God, He knows them all. Oh yeah, God, He knows them. Sent an e or talking donkey, an e or talking donkey, an e or talking donkey, to warn the prophet Balaam. God made some fierce roaring lions, some fierce roaring lions. Some fierce roaring lions to be nice to Daniel. God made all creatures great and small. Some jump, some gallop, some even crawl. Some squeak, some howl, and some they roar. But God, He knows them all. Oh, yeah, but God, He knows them all. Gerard.
morning. Great tune. We had a, a Noah's Ark themed uh, week at Refuel on the Road, uh, Refuel last week in Fokker, so that was really good. 1 Timothy 6 12 in the NIV says, Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your confession in the presence of many witnesses. That was the word for today, yesterday on my phone app. And it reminded me after being at Refuel and listening to the speakers last week that sometimes we do have to fight to hold on to our faith. When things are going well, the devil will often poke his way in and stir up trouble. When things are difficult, and attitudes can easily become negative and problematic. So let's come to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, make us receptive and open as we lay our intercessions before you. May we accept your kingdom like children taking bread from the hands of their parents, just like those Jesus fed. We thank you that our minister Pamela and our church leadership team are working faithfully to lead your church here in Culloden and Ardersier Parish and that you work through them. May they always be aware of the blessings you bestow on them. Strengthen and uphold them when they grow weary in their ministries. Constantly remind us all that you who began all good work in us will ultimately perfect it did perfect it through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Dear Creator God, we pray for your whole creation, for our brothers and sisters throughout the world, for their lives to be respected and revered, regardless of creed or colour, gender or sexuality, wealth or status, and for a responsible sharing of precious resources, and for the conservation of our fragile and beautiful world. We pray especially for a powerful and long peace to come to both Ukraine and to Gaza and to other places where conflicts are blazing. Are blazing. Father God, we raise before you those around the world trying to grow or produce food under difficult circumstances as climate change continues to affect farmers and producers. We pray for food processors and manufacturers and crop buyers to treat farmers fairly and not to tie them into impossible contracts which they cannot control. We also pray for people throughout the world who are struggling to cope with the effects of climate change. Shortages of food, flooding, excessive heat, especially the frail and elderly and others at those risks. Loving, gentle but powerful healing God, Please bring your miraculous healing to all who are sick in body, mind, and or in spirit. Make whole those who are broken and shed light wherever there is darkness. Hear now in a moment of silence our individual prayers from our hearts for those we name and lift before you that we know and have asked you to heal. Father God, we pray for our politicians and our new government, and we ask for wisdom and careful stewardship and management of the resources available to the government and to the civil service. We pray for local government too, facing tough choices on what to do with the money and resources it has. We pray for America and what seems to be a very polarized election campaign, which seems to have started very early. And we ask for people to look deep into themselves there as they consider who to vote for as president in November. Merciful God, we thank you for those who have travelled before us on the way of the cross and are now at peace in your eternal presence. Help us to live always mindful of your promise to us that that road of faith will lead into your heavenly kingdom. In a moment of silence, we bring before you those on our hearts who have passed recently or whose anniversary occurs at this time.
Dear Lord, we bring before the Olympics in Paris and France. And Lord, we just ask that the sporting events would pass peacefully without trouble or more trouble and that the athletes would take part in a fair and thoughtful manner considering the other athletes they're competing against in everything they do. Faithful God, fill our hunger with a food that lasts, the bread of God which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Please, Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. The reading this morning is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose stream make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought in the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. Uh, We're continuing our series in uh, Songs of Summer with this psalm today, Psalm 46, that Lorna has just read to us. The title of the psalm talks uh, about being written for the director of music and for the sons of Korah. And they were Levites who served in the temple and led people in worship of God, no matter what was happening around them. And as we know, um, it's easy to be happy and sing when everything is going well. But what about when life takes a turn for the worse and difficulties and trouble come and we see chaos in the world? Turning to God in praise can be hard, but we find many Psalms are just that, singing God's praise in the midst of hardship. Uh, A few weeks ago, Pamela asked us if we could name our favourite song. Um, I found that quite difficult on the spot to think of what my favourite song was, and maybe you thought about it afterwards. But a German theologian of the 16th century, Martin Luther, he loved this psalm, Psalm 46. And he wrote a well-known hymn based on it. Now, it was well-known in the past. It's maybe a bit old-fashioned for us these days, but it has been a well-known psalm and greatly loved by many Christians through the centuries. And it says, A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper he, amid the flood of mortal ills, prevailing. Old fashioned words to us, but the sense of God being there and prevailing over everything. And the psalm gave Martin Luther great hope and comfort, even when he was being hounded for his beliefs and there was turmoil in the world around his, his time in the 16th century. 
Christians can sing in the midst of difficulties, not because of our confidence in ourselves, but because of our confidence in God. So let's look at Psalm 46 and take encouragement from it, because I'm going to bring out three things in which we can have total confidence in every situation. First thing is God's protection, God's presence, and God's power. Let me read the first three verses again. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Selah, a little word in the Hebrew that didn't come across in our reading because it wasn't divided into the verses, but we'll think about that little word shortly. God is our refuge and strength. The psalm begins with God's provision and help in difficulty. An experience told the psalmist that God was to be trusted and that he was a place of refuge, a place of shelter, rescue, security. In the Old Testament, there were designated cities of refuge where people could run to if they were in trouble and be kept safe. And here the psalmist says that God is that place to which we can run. And it's not help from a distance, but God is described as a very present help or an ever present help right here with us. God is near to us. Therefore, as it says in verse two, therefore we will not fear. And this is what scholars call the logic of faith. That is, if God is a real refuge, if God is a real help, then there is no need to fear, even in the worst crisis or situation. Logical. Even though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, the psalmist declares to himself, and to others, and to us as we read it, I can trust in God. I don't have to fear. Events in our lives can feel overwhelming and out of our control. But the psalm talks about natural events like earthquakes or floods to paint that picture. Things that are so much bigger than ourselves or anything man can handle nothing we can do completely out of our control. And that's what the psalmist is describing here. Earth giving way, mountains falling, waters roaring, very frightening situations when you're in the midst of them. The psalmist says, God is our help. Therefore, we will not fear. It's as if he's saying, this is happening, but God. It's not a questioning of God. It's not sort of, but God, where are you? It's no, it's assurance and confidence in him. But God is greater than all these things. You know, those are the two best words, I think, to have in our minds in difficulties. This is terrible, but God. Don't know what we're going to do to get through this, but God. Wars breaking out, but God. God knows, God cares, God is with us and will protect us. You know, these but God phrases appear over 40 times throughout scripture. Look them up sometime. It's a great study to do and builds our confidence in God and his ability to help us. God is not overcome by our situation. He's not outdone by what's happening to us or outdone by what's happening in the world. God knows and he is in control. 
And as I said, the, the psalmist ends verse 3 with that little word, Selah. It means pause and think about this. It's like a but God moment. God is our refuge. We will not fear. Though everything crashes around us, Selah. Pause. Think on that. God is our refuge an ever-present help. It's as if the psalmist is saying, wait a minute, let's get a perspective of God and who he is and what he's doing and what he can do in any particular situation. And also let us see things from God's perspective, not our perspective, God's perspective. Selah, pause. Think on who God is in the crisis, in the trauma, in the difficulty. What is he doing and what can he do? We can have confidence in God's help and protection, not because of who we are, not because of ourselves, but because of who he is, our refuge and strength. God's protection. My second point is God's presence. Let me read verses 4 and 5. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is with, within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. In the midst of difficulty and uproar, there is a river. I love that phrase because in scripture it conjures up an abundant, constant provision of love, mercy, healing, joy, peace. There is a river. And the river is, is a symbol of blessing and God's presence. And we find the river right through scripture from um, Garden of Eden in Genesis and right throughout the Old and New Testament till right at the end of Revelation, at the end of the New Testament, where it talks about the river of life. And for us as Christians, it's the very presence of God living in us through the Holy Spirit. Remember what Jesus said to the woman at the well in John chapter 4. Whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst again. The water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. God not only provides a place of safety through the storms of life by his protection, but he provides a person of the Holy Spirit to live in us and to give us peace and gladness of heart. There is a river. Peace like a river, as it talks about in Isaiah. Peace like a river in the storms of life. So we can have confidence in God because of his protection. He's our refuge and strength. And secondly, in God's presence. He's that river of life, giving us hope and peace. And my third point is God's power. Now the psalm after this seems to move on from the people and our situation to what's happening in the world. Let me read verse 6. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. One word from God is all it takes. He is at work in the world and he is Lord of the nations. And verse 7 says, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah, that little word again. Selah, pause and think on that. The Lord Almighty is in control despite what the nations, what the world thinks, despite 
what is happening. The psalmist again is trying to remind himself and others and us to see things from God's perspective. Selah, pause, stop and think of who is actually with us and in control. The Lord Almighty, mighty all-powerful God, or the Lord of hosts is often described in scripture, the God of the heavenly armies. He is with us. Remember the story of Elisha and his servant in 2 Kings chapter 6 in the Old Testament. Elisha was in Dohan and the king of Aram sent a huge army to surround the whole city. Elisha's servant saw this and was terrified. But Elisha knew that God Almighty, the Lord of hosts, was with him. And he told the servant not to fear. 2 Kings 6, it says, look, he said to the servant, Lord, open his eyes so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots all around the army that was there, all around the area. The Lord of hosts was there. And that same Lord, the Lord Almighty, is with us. But also notice in verse 7, it talks about the Lord Almighty, God all-powerful being with us. But it also says the God of Jacob is our fortress. In the Old Testament, God is often referred to as God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. But here it's just the God of Jacob. Now, you will know from Genesis that Jacob wasn't a very nice character. He was a cheat and a schemer. Yet his story is also one of covenant and grace. And he met with God face to face. He had a personal knowledge of the living God. God helped Jacob despite what he was like. And God helps us through Jesus despite what we are like. He is our saviour and he is our helper. By grace are we saved. God is Lord Almighty, but he is also the God of Jacob. My God, your God. Replace your name for the God of Jacob, God of Jenny, the God of Douglas, the God of Gus the God of Elspeth. Replace your name. He is our Lord. If we give our lives to him and trust him, the mighty, all-powerful God is our saviour and friend. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. <laughs> Pause and think on that. Sam goes on to say in verses 8 and 9, Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns and sh the shields with fire. Come and see the works of the Lord, says the psalmist. In the first part of the psalm, the dominant idea is that God is a refuge and a help. But here it talks of God's glory and the works of God, his hand in history, causing wars to cease and desolations on the earth, his hand bringing righteousness and justice, peace and judgment, his mark on the world. He is the one who is ultimately in control of all of humanity and all that has happened and is happening and will happen in the world. And in the light of that thought, in the light of the works of the Lord, comes his word to us in verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. 
I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. So there's a shift here in who's actually speaking in the psalm. Up until now, the psalmist has been telling us who and what God is and about his peace and his judgment and power. But now we have God speaking directly to the people and to us and to the world. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted. I will be exalted in the earth. So there's a sense in the Hebrew that all argument and opposition should stop and be still. Be quiet. Still you're speaking. Still your objections. Still you're complaining. Still you're boasting. Derek Kidner, a British Old Testament scholar, said, Be still is not in the first place comfort for the harassed, but a rebuke to a restless and turbulent world. Quiet. In fact, leave off your nonsense. So it's not advice to lead a contemplative life. Yes, times of quiet and stillness are really important for us to focus on God. But in this setting, in this, the context of this psalm, it's really a matter of Stop your complaining. Stop your arguments. Stop relying on yourselves. Stop thinking that man has the answer to all the world's problems. Surrender and acknowledge that the Lord is the one and only God. See things from his perspective. Be still and know that I am God. I don't know if you've ever been in a place in nature which causes you to be struck silent with the awesomeness of the beauty and glory around you. I've traveled to many places in the world that are just amazing. But I remember that um, the time that I went to Victoria Falls in Africa was one of those awestruck moments. The volume and noise of the water falling into a narrow ravine and the amazing immensity and power of the water and the spray rising for miles. People could see it for miles and the local people called it the smoke that thunders. Just the amazing nature of the power. I could only look at it in silence and awe. And that's what this is. Be still and know that I am God. Silent and awestruck by who God is. Nothing will stand in his way. He is Lord. And then the psalm ends, with verse 11, which is the same as verse 7. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. Pause. God is with us. We can have confidence that the same God who is exalted in all the earth is with us. We don't need anything else, really, do we? There's a story about John Wesley, the great evangelist of the 18th century. The day he died, he was very weak, hardly able to whisper. But at the very end, with all his strength, he suddenly cried out, the best of all, God is with us. And he apparently raised his hand slightly and sort of waved it in triumph and said again, the best of all, God is is with us. And that indeed is the best of all. God is with us. Whatever your circumstances, good or bad or awful perhaps, whatever is happening in the world, put your faith in him. The Lord Almighty 
the Lord of hosts is with us. Definitely the best of all. Be still and know that he is God, your refuge, your strength, your place of safety in a world which is often chaotic, fearful, full of turmoil and difficulty. He is the all-powerful one and has overcome the world. And he is coming again to right all wrongs. He will be exalted in the nations. He will be exalted in the earth. Selah. Pause. Think on that and do not fear. So we can have confidence and trust in God's protection. We can trust in his presence with us. And we can trust in his power to be at work. Let's pray. Lord, help us to find our place of peace and refuge in you. Help us to leave off our arguments, our fears, our doubts, and be still, be quiet before you, knowing who you are, knowing that you are with us, the God of glory and power, the God of peace and comfort. Our confidence is in you, our Lord and our God. And our hearts say with John Wesley, the best of all, God is with us. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>